this one will be just a, a little demo on the uh, sketching of an idea for a playground or what I'm calling a big object or objects. Um, and it will just be the sketch. So I just turned it on in either so there's a bunch of playground sketches, but once again, if you want to do something that's not as literal, um, which also not as complicated, uh, that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll just um, go over some of the things that are already in iLearn, and that is the notes from my past class. Um, and uh, a little bit of it we've already done last week when we did the Mike Lean exercises, right? So I'll just quickly show you these pages again, which are already there, and then I'll, I'll recreate them, okay? Um, one of the things that's very important is that whatever you do, make yourself a little plan, like a little floor plan or a little site plan of where you want things to be, uh, and create a little grid to see where things can go, right? Because then you can use that in the perspective, because um, we're going to use perspective, right? And I'll, in a second, I'll explain how this is built. Um, and then, um, you know, just place your objects. I would say it's, it could be fun to do trees, since we did the little exercise about trees um, with the Mike Lean sketch. So I would, uh, you know, I would, I would do that, even if you're drawing like a big object, like I said, like maybe a big Xerox machine. Um, you should have some curves in the object so that you practice those again, like some circles, uh, so you practice your ellipses. And uh, try to do, this is actually also from Mike Lynn, in terms of layout of your objects, try not to do something that's like hokey or silly, like symmetry is not really that great unless you're designing, you know, a renaissance plaza, right? Um, and so, once again, I'm just showing this. These are already in either, and this is a quick way of doing a, a staircase, if you have stairs in your, um, in your layout. I'll go over that too. And shadows, we did that a little bit. We didn't quite do shadows in perspective, but... Um, and then maybe slides. And, um, and objects that are, you know, at an inclined plane. And that's, I guess, the last one which I did again. So let me just quickly do the, uh, the perspective, okay? Uh, on Thursday, Todd is actually going to go over these sketches which he did. Um, which are like uh, two or three steps. One is just construction lines with uh, line weights, different line weights, and that's a good practice to um, kind of get, you know, your drawing sort of take form, and then cleaning it up with, again, just simple line, line weights, and then doing some marker. Um, so this was like a printer or something, and it became, you know, maybe a door, of, I don't know, some kind of building. Um, and then mixing it up a little bit with uh, markers, I mean, not markers, um, pastels. So actually, on, on Thursday, you should bring some pastels. You so that's, uh, that's the brand we've been using, but I think there's different brands. These are pretty good, Prismacolor, and uh, you can buy, I don't know, six. You know, you don't have to buy 36 like this is, but um, okay, you know them, right? They look like chalk. So yeah, bring some on Thursday, okay? And um, and so we'll go over how to add pastel to get you know much more um, you know um, how should I say uh, in like without material like less materiality like sky or something that's you know needs to really fade. Okay, but some of this is actually in the building too. Okay, so anyway, we'll pick this up on Thursday. So let's let's do this. And I was trying to remember how I did it, and I remember it luckily. Um, which is that you know you don't have to do a complete like really elaborate construction, although you might have learned how to do that in in drafting and sketching. Um, so it's a simple two point perspective, right? you know, left vanishing point and right vanishing point. 
and, uh, and then all your verticals are going to stay vertical. So it's not a three point where all your verticals also would be converging. Instead, we're going to keep them you know, straight. So let's do something like that. Angling it is a good idea. So if you are, you know, if this is your plane of projection, and then your objects are like that. So what I'm going to do is like draw a little, you know, you could call it a little playground or a little plaza, and I'm just going to put a grid. Now remember that we said that if you have a square, things get a little easier. So you could start with a square. I'm going to do a grid that as a reference, okay, and then maybe an extra half here, right? So now, if you wanted to do that in perspective, you know, just establish your um, horizon line, right? And uh, things are going to get really small really fast, so what you can do is do a sketch and then um, you know, use really large paper to get, you know, out because really later you're going to be using only the center part. So it's up to you, but let's just establish these two centers. And let's also just figure out where we are here, right? Although now I'm going to have a little trouble because I'm not doing everything like exact. So just kind of more or less in the middle. Um, so this point, maybe it's over here somewhere. So let's just try to do a simple uh, square first, okay? And you can kind of eyeball it too, right? So let's say that's a square in perspective, okay? So normally when you do your construction, you would have all kinds of lines, per, you know, coming down from the plan, etc., etc. Well, there's a simpler way to do the divisions, right? Because they get these guys, they're going to get progressively bigger as they move towards the front. So how do I do those divisions? Um, there's a cool, cool little thing, which is the diagonals behave in the same way. So if you have a, a square like this, I can now simply use diagonals to establish the midpoint of that square. Okay, so now that's going to give me my first division. Just like that. So that now what I just did, I just did this big cross here, right? So now for the other ones in between, I can do the same trick. I can now split the diagonals further. So I could do it here and I get this number. I mean this crossing and I can do it the same here. And in theory, all these diagonals eventually would actually converge into another point somewhere, okay? Because set of parallel lines uh, converge in the same point. So that is to say that this, all these lines also converge into another point, okay? But we don't really care much. So all we, all we care is that at this point we have these other crossings here and I can now make my other divisions. And you know, because this is a quick and dirty sketch, I'm getting a progression that's not that obvious, but I can try to fix that a little bit. Uh, and the same from this angle, right? If I was using a ruler, I probably would get a better result. But, but it's actually not bad. Okay, so that's my first. And you may or may not have tiles in your design, but this will give you again like a kind of template to place your objects. Okay, um, let's see, now I could do roughly, let's see, if I extend this line right here, I think I get the other half that I was looking for, this extra half, because I'm extending this, I'm extending this diagonal right here to that point, from this point, which here is from this point to this point and then to that point, right? So that's another quick way to get that remaining part. Um, and then you can use existing lines to, you know, kind of 
resolve the missing pieces. Okay, so that's a quick Yeah, it's a little it's a little even if you know this, right? This is almost like the same as that. In fact, this one would have to be much less, but it gives me something to start working. Um, if you use the ruler again, it will be much, much better. Okay, and now this view, if this was like a, a square or something, you can see that it's already very high, like that my horizon line is quite big, because as soon as I put, say, you know, anything on this plan, let's just, let's just make up an object, you know, let's say there's a, a cube right here. So that would be, let's see, that would be here. Uh, in terms of height, um, you could start by, you know, starting at this point right here and, and make, making your true heights here, okay, and then always going by that. So, let's see, how would we, I mean, you can also just eyeball it. If you're person, you know, if you're looking at this and you're like here, you can see that all of a sudden that's a little thing that looks like a what you call it hopscotch thing, right? It's really really tiny. But if the person is, um, let's see, yeah, the people would have to be. This one is really like a, a bird's eye view. Uh, so for right now, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put the people. But proportion, you can see that if I want to make this into a cube, right, then, you know, I just have a sense that, you know, it's probably about that big. Right. But whatever you do, you just elevate your, you know, your shapes, and then once you get the first two, then you can get the other one. So that's, that could be one element. Um, if we wanted to have, you know, looking at it more from like underneath, let's see how we would do that. Um, quick sketch. What would happen is that this floor that we see now quite big and quite, you know, from above would have to be much, much more um, foreshortened. Yeah, that's not good. Stick to the pencil, okay. Um, so that if I pick two points, let's say, I'm just going to do a quick s square, okay. This is a kid right here, right? Remember, we put we put our people with the horizon line always, um, you know, matching their heads. So now at this point, it starts looking more like a real thing, right? Because this could be, you know, maybe there's a tower here. And you could start building, you know, your object. Now, a tower right there, it's kind of silly because it's going to, obscure everything else that's behind, but that's the first thing I could think about. Um, you know, maybe there's towers on the four corners. Uh, I'll put up the uh, this little sketch, well, these drawings that Sophia did, and she did this um, chess, chess board, actually, which is a really nice idea. Um, so I'm just, you know, kind of quickly building it from, there you go. And then, you know, as soon as you put people, again, that are like, with their heads there, it looks, it looks all real, right? Uh, so, that's how you should do your, like, 
you know, really, really basic structure of your uh, of your big object or of your perspective. Um, and you can change the relationship. So now it's like this is pretty dead center here. Um, but you can move this around, right? So that you can have a little more interesting uh, angle. So that maybe it's like this, let's see. And don't worry too much about being, you know, like super precise or just making it look like totally real because it's just a sketch. Um, so what would happen if that, you know, you could think of it as kind of a box and everything happens within that box. A little bit like the, uh, you know, the playground. I mean, there is a certain kind of, you know, dramatic effect on, of having this um, you know, kind of Alright um, Oh, okay, this is about uh, ellipses um, and, uh, and openings that are circular so the same principle applies in the sense of what we did like when we had um, you know simple isometrics so your your short axis of your ellipses match the direction of the long um, element you know if this was a pipe and the only difference now is that from there to this, you know, instead of this being all the same as in isometric, right, they're going to be slightly, you know, tapered. Uh, but otherwise, it's the same, uh, same principle. So I think this one was, again, very, very straightforward, you know, kind of a... Two layers, so it's a little less... So you pick your vanishing points and then you build this thing which is basically like a tower with Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna leave the rest out. Um, You know, you don't have to f construct everything like super precise. So here I'm going to just do this, well, what could have been a door or like an under understairs or something. Um, I'm just going to eyeball where that might be, okay? So just, in other words, I'm just going to make this smaller than this and that's probably going to be pretty good, right? Uh, and then the only thing I'm going to keep going, always going back to is, is my vanishing point, right? So I'll just continue that. Got new batteries. It's really cool. It doesn't go. It goes like. Zzzz. All right. So that's my what I'm calling my little door now, and I'm gonna do my slide. So again, I just I just make it up. I just say, okay, the slide is gonna end up here. Let's make it a little steeper. Okay, it's gonna end up here. All right. So now my known my known spots are here. Right. These are the known spots because I have them. So I know where it's going to end because it's going to be somewhere here and I simply go from my vanishing point there and from here to there and now, well actually that's it, that's done because technically if I did everything else correct my you know, inclined plane lines now should in theory, also converge because they're parallel onto some kind of point somewhere. You know, at this point, it's going to be off the page, but um, so basically, you know, this looks you know kind of fancy, this inclined plane, but it's really nothing but 
the result of combining these points at the top of the door with these two points, you know, almost as if it was a shadow, right? So, it's fun to really draw without worrying too much of being, about being super precise because it feels good. That's the main reason. Um, okay, and maybe you can even draw your horizon line in the back there. Okay. So, yeah, I think if you wanted to do steps, you would just break it down. How would I do that? Yeah, I would probably do something like break this up into, um, maybe let's say if I want to do four steps. You know, so I get like these points here on this line and then be, I would just, you know, bring them up. And I would get these lines, these points on this inclined line. Um, and now I could do, probably the simplest thing would be to connect those points to the vanishing point. Let's see, how many do I get? Yeah, that could kind of work. So now what I do is I just extend. Yeah, see, they're not, they're not quite too even, but I'm going to try to fix that. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's see if I can. So here the steps are gonna disappear because they're gonna be below my um, my eyesight, right? So even simple shapes like that could be, you know, a good. Okay. All right. Um, just want to show once again these drawings from uh, um, Lawrence Alprin, who is a landscape architect who did, uh, gosh, he did Market Street and he did the uh, Roosevelt Memorial. And I think I showed these drawings before because in a way, this guy can't really draw that well, although his drawings are like really beautiful because he's using whatever he knows about drawing, he's using it like in the best possible way, you know, very simple, very lively, uh, very quick. Uh, so, this is uh, sort of a step, in a sense, below my clean, which tends to be much more, you know, sophisticated, uh, but it has the same freshness. So, you know, you can get around the fact that maybe you cannot draw a, you know, Monterey Cypress or whatever, that's a Monterey Cypress maybe. Um, no, probably not because it's in Washington, but by, you know, by figuring out something else, so. Um, so for the playground, what you want to do is combine a little bit of the Michelin techniques with, uh, with the rendering techniques of rapid vis, right? So for your, in a way, this applies to like organic stuff, right? And then this is more to like things, right? Objects. Um, okay, so I'll end it there.